got silver coming around there. Looks like we got some silver coming out at the bottom. I don't know if I was bringing it in very well on this side. So I think I'm going to file it down. Burnt the crap out of it. So I think I'm going to clean it up with the wire brush. Some hot water and I think I'm going to try it again and try to get some. Just didn't feel like I was getting it down inside very well. The very first fork I've made and boy did I learn a lot in doing this and this is apparently a long a mid reach brake caliper so it's supposed to go 47 to 57 and you can see here it's 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 on the extreme Right now it's all the way down. The pads are all, all the way down in the slots and you can see they don't quite grab the rim. These did not slide over the fork blades very well. I had to end up filing and grinding out to try to get them on. And I just never felt like they were really seating all the way down. I flipped the fork crown. I got it in backwards. I meant to switch it. I saw it before I started brazing and I was thinking, okay, don't forget to flip this around because this is actually the back of the fork crown. And I burnt the hell out of flux. So I'm not controlling my heat very well at all. The uh, Reynolds fork blades, 
are nice, but I don't think they were meant for these dropouts because the diameter just doesn't quite fit in there. So anyway, I'm a little bummed out, I'll be honest. I was hoping this was going to come out nicer, but I guess it is what it is. So here's a fork. This was about, I guess this was, fork blades were pretty expensive. So I think I probably invested close to $100 in this fork. And I don't know, I'm sure it, the fork crown is probably salvageable. I could probably heat this up, pull these fork blades out and reuse this and this. I might, I actually might be able to do that. So that way I don't have to buy a new fork crown or a steer. Cause I think I got that put in pretty good. So yeah, actually I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna try to take this off. So the plan for today is uh, we're going to deconstruct this fork now that uh, we put it together and we put it together wrong. I've already kind of put some numbers into my design, into the bike CAD design. So I've updated a few things based on the need to reduce the length of this fork. Uh, but I want to double check all those measurements and then we're going to disassemble the fork. And afterwards, I was thinking maybe what I'll do is I will try brazing with some different flux. The flux I was using for the silver is this flux by Harris, uh, Harris Welding Supply. And this is their silver flux. So I chose to try this because I thought this would probably be the best flux for the silver wire since it all came from the same factory. So if it's 622 divided by two, that's 311. Then minus your break, you want it at about 310. And right now we are at 320. So we need to go a full centimeter shorter on this fork. Wow. I don't know if you can see that, but there was definitely no silver right in there which is on the inside, which is where the hot, the heat sink is. Didn't get a lot of silver in there. We didn't get a lot right in there, but we got good silver coverage around there on this side. So that was over here. And then on this one, same thing. Didn't get a lot of silver in there. Got a very minimal amount of silver actually, a lot less. Got some good silver over there. So, I'm glad I took it apart. Now let's look inside here. You can definitely see there was zero silver down inside there. Probably because I didn't get this area, you know, warmed up enough or hot enough. Got some good silver on that side, actually. Not quite down in the bottom of the or the socket all the way down but definitely all the way around all the way around the socket except for that inside corner and uh, minimal silver here but I knew this one had pulled away so I was gonna touch that up later so what I'm thinking of doing for the next when I go to redo this I'm thinking of putting some silver wire down inside the bottom of the sockets and then when it heats up, that silver in there will melt and grab onto the fork blades at the top of the fork crown. Um, so, yeah. Wow, it definitely took a lot of heat, though, to get that off. 
a lot of time and, and, and now it makes me realize like you definitely you definitely have to put the heat into it but I gotta have flux that can handle that heat so that's the next test here See where the silver melts, it's right about that dull red color. So I don't need to go hotter than that next time. Got them all cleaned up. Probably run the, uh, when I go to braise these again, I'll probably hit them with the sander. Some fresh sandpaper right before I do that, just to really get the last little bit of uh, black stuff off but uh, we'll do that later this is they're pretty good I gotta trim them down when I get the new dropouts in the mail and this thing is gonna be a lot of work to clean up so On the second time around, I felt much more comfortable and thought I was doing a better job with heat management. Even still, there's a lot to learn. Where to move the torch, add the heat, and how to pull the silver through the joint are things I need a lot of practice. I was able to reuse the fork crown and the fork blades, but I replaced the dropouts. These dropouts have a slightly larger internal diameter in the socket and they fit over the fork tips much better. The Type U gas flux also seemed to work better and I felt it offered more working time even though I still burnt it to complete exhaustion. There was much less cleanup however. Cutting the fork down another 10 millimeters not only allowed the mid-reach brakes a perfect fit but had the added bonus of looking better. I trim the blades from the curved ends so the fork curves look better as the radius of the bend transitions into the dropouts with less of the straight section. So the last thing to do is just check to see how straight the fork is and see what the brake pad alignment will be now that the fork is a little bit shorter. So the fork dropout spacing is still a little bit tight, just like it was before. So that's something that might need a little bit of cold setting. But as you can see now, we have the brakes in and they do work. They're making good contact on the side of the rim. The pads were adjusted a few millimeters up from the bottom of the slot, which gives me a little bit of room for future adjustability if I need to, depending on the rim that I plan to use for this bike. This was just a wheel I had. I don't think I'll be using this for this bike, but um, it was a machine built wheel, so it is pretty straight and it would be good to test it with the fork to see how straight it came out. And I'm pretty pleased. I think the fork is really straight without any uh, cold setting yet. and I can see that the wheel is pretty much centered, the crown straight, and the fork at the same distance on a flat surface, and that's without any cold setting. So overall, I have to say I'm pretty pleased with how this turned out, and I'm anxious to get going on the triangle, the trapezoid, for the next video. So stay tuned. In the next video, we're going to be making the front triangle trapezoid of this West County Custom Bicycle. We'll see you then.